Uh, Midge, this studio that you've got out here in the, in the garden, it's a relatively small facility in mm. what looks like a, a prefabricated office building. Is this where you're doing all your writing and composing? Or what kind of work are you doing here? Well, I'm, I'm doing everything here, actually. Uh, I've only had it for a, a couple of years now. Um, I've built a variety of studios in the past. Uh, my first proper studio was a separate building in the bottom of the garden, which I had, uh, you know, separate rooms and floating rooms, rooms within rooms. And, uh, and had the same guy who designed the, uh, the acoustics for Mayfair Studios up in uh, Primrose Hill, uh, where I used to work a lot. And, uh, and of course, <laughs> when you move on from there, um, nobody buys it as a studio. They, they, you know, the, the, guy, the person who bought it said, oh, what a fantastic place, I'm a potter. And I thought, what a soundproof pottery, you know, I hope you never get locked <laughs> in. Uh, and then I moved on and I built another room. This time uh, things had developed and I, I, I came up with the whole concept of just the one room, one huge control room, which I built underneath a big six-car garage that I had in, in uh, Chiswick. And uh, I had a, uh, the desk, a little Harrison desk, that, which my engineer would sit at, and behind that, a massive console built for my, uh, my little Atari uh, uh, sequencer, my little Atari... Um, uh, 1040 or something. That's a 1040, exactly. Uh, and all my, my keyboards and things, and a patch bay, and it was all tied through to the desk, so that when I had something that I thought was interesting, or ready to commit to tape, which is real recording, I'd just tell Rick, my engineer, and he would uh, record it through. And again, uh, when I moved on from there, um, it, the guy who bought the house <laughs> came in and said, uh, what a great place for the train set. And I thought, oh, again, you know, at a £25,000, you know, uh, air con soundproof yeah. air conditioning unit above, because obviously in London you get planes coming overhead all the time. So when I moved uh, west, when I moved down into the Bath area, um, I vowed never to do the same thing again. And it seemed to me that when we moved here, rather than having a facility in the house, because as any mu musician will know, that you know, it's sitting listening to a drum pattern over and over and over again while you tweak the hi-hat. Drives your wife mad. No, it might be really interesting to you, but the family just go bananas. So, uh, so I, was, I was relegated to the bottom of the garden and I found this company uh, who, who built uh, these prefab um, uh, insulated uh, double glazed K-glass uh, office buildings. Um, but I never got around to doing anything about the acoustics in it because most of the stuff 90% of the stuff I was doing in here was all computer based, so it was all internal, it didn't really matter. I'd never mixed anything here. It was only when I started sticking a microphone up, yeah. I realised it sounded like, you know, Glasgow's central station. Yeah. You know? so. so the plan now is to uh, compose in here, to mix in here and to record just vocals or maybe some acoustic guitar. Or something. I think, yeah, possibly mixing in here because everything's changed, the technology has changed so much. Uh, hence having a, a little room this size. I'm a one-man operation. Maybe two people at the most might sit in here. Um, you know, other than that, it's me and my little glorified uh, workshop. And I, I will create uh, <laughs> masters, not as in masterpieces, but master recordings here. Because yeah. uh, I've always advocated that, you know, that uh, you know, with a, with a computer, when you started being able to record uh, on a computer, the, the, the technical quality is not that much different from what you'd get in a studio that costs £1,500 a day. Um, and it's a lovely facility to have uh, the ability to spend as long or as short as you want uh, yeah. tweaking and twiddling and recording, as long as you know when the cutoff point is, you know, when to stop and when it's finished. Okay. So the, the plan today is to put up some basic trapping just to try and time some of this... Um resonance that we've got in here. I, I think the bass end won't be too much of a problem because a lot of it would go straight through a, a lightweight structure like this. But we have got some bass trapping in place for the back wall. Just to well, as you can hear, there's a lot of reflections in here. We have a, I don't know what it's made of, it's probably metal or plastic uh, roofing up there, which just sends everything straight back at you. There's a lot of glass, two walls in this uh, building uh, are glass. Um, so everything's just going to fire all over the yeah. place. So anything that can be done that will help soak that up uh, so that I can just stick a microphone up. I and mean, we talked uh, prior to, to coming here today about you know where to do vocals. And in and, and, and technical terms, that's absolutely right. I should have a little vocal area that's deadened. And, but in reality, uh, I'm, I'm, here. I, I, I drag the microphone over to where I'm, where I'm standing in front of the screen. I like to see the screen. I like to be able to operate the stuff. Yeah. And I just record what's there. So anything that could have helps helps me be able to do that 
is going to be a, a major uh, okay. boost for me. Well, some lightweight absorbers in the ceiling should be okay without putting too much stress on the structure. Mm. And uh, a couple of free hanging ones on the wall that you can Side. take down when you want. I think yeah. uh, we'll get 90% of the way there, which is probably as far as you need to go. And maybe we can then look at reciting your sub, because if it's not in the optimum place, you're going to find that your base notes are not even in level. I see. Now, that's, well, that's where my technical ability falls to the ground. I thought a sub could be, you know, omnidirectional, could be anywhere, you could stick it, you know, under a sofa or whatever. And maybe that's true of, uh, you know, surround sound tellies or whatever, maybe not in the studios. Well, the reflections from the walls interact with the direct sound, so you get peaks and troughs in different places, and uh, the trick is finding the, the space that gives you the least hassle in that area. Okay, so we'll make a start by putting some battens up on the back wall, put three of these traps, which um, I built at home because we hadn't really got time to do it today. The ones you prepared earlier? Yeah, I prepared earlier, but it's just straightforward slabs of rock wall, some matching fabric over the top, and a right. piece of barrier mat at the back to act as a bit of a base absorber. Which I'd never seen before. Which you hadn't seen before. And they'll be spaced two or three inches away from the wall, so they should be quite effective. Great. These are the homemade wooden traps that we've made. It's got standard high density rock wall on the inside. It's got fabric on the front. And on the back, we've got this very heavy, very limp barrier mat, which is going to hang down like a curtain and hopefully absorb some of the low end. Let's see where we go. Unless we go under and wedge it up. But it's, I mean, it'll, it'll pull in tight, yeah. it'll be okay. Is that level? Too it's high. Straight, which is the main thing. That's it. Not any really more than that. That'll be fine. And for this side, um, I'll start with the short length. So these are the traps we made. The front's actually covered in a fabric which is a cheap, unbleached cotton dust sheet because it's the right colour match. Acoustically transparent. We have the rock wall slab in the back, barrier mat hanging freely behind, and a couple of mirror plates to hold the whole thing up. So it's not really rocket science. It's alright, we can tighten it up once it's in place. Oh, look at that. It looks just like real people did it. Uh, spirit level. Well, let's get that. Get not spirit level, get it parallel with the side is the main thing. No, I think that is. Can we take a vote on whether that's parallel? Uh, it needs to come down this end. Okay. Yeah, a bit more. Right. So what we need to do is to angle it until that just touches the tape measure. There. That's it. Stop. Freeze. Looks good. That looked level out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where it goes then. It should make quite a difference. So this is the predictable part of the job just about done. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scary bit next. So far then we've got up the three broadband traps that we've created for the front of the room. We've hung them on pieces of wooden batten which we've painted with Midge's touch-up paint so that it's all cosmetically attractive. So all that remains now is to give these things a bit of a haircut for where the threads are sticking out to the side. And I think that's done. So the next step is to get the ceiling and the side walls sorted out. Okay. 